Today we're going to start talking about the line of best fit and this is one of the most useful things you can do in math is understanding the relationship between numbers and an equation or something that we've been studying about. And the first thing I want to talk about is this idea of a scatter plot. A scatter plot is nothing more than just throwing a bunch of points onto a coordinate grid. If I have a bunch of points like that on a coordinate grid, we'll just say this is an XY coordinate grid, that's called a scatter plot. Now what I want you to notice, you may have actually learned about this idea before, is doesn't it look like all the points are kind of um, going in the same direction? Aren't they all kind of following the same general pattern? Right? We would call this a positive correlation. And the reason we say it's a positive correlation is because it has a positive slope. All right, if we remember what we learned about slope, this has a positive slope. The numbers or the points appear to be following a line in a positive direction. So if they looked like this, what would we say they have? a negative correlation. This would be a negative correlation where the points appear to be trending in the same direction. You know what I mean by saying if they have a, the same trend, right? If we look over here at my first example, as the X's go this way, the Y's kind of go this way, and they seem to be following a general trend. So we would call that a positive correlation. Sometimes, though, the points might be all over the place, like that one. If they're all over the place like that one, we would say there's no correlation. This one there is no correlation because the points are not trending in any one direction. All right. So the first thing I want to do is make a scatter plot and I want to do this first one with kind of a more challenging set of numbers because if you can do one with the more challenging numbers then the, the easier numbers will be a cinch. So what I'm going to give you is a, a, a table of values. And it's kind of interesting. We have, several of us in here like to fish. Um, these are going to be values that relate the, how long a fish is to how fast it swims. All right? So we're going to make a table. And one value will be the length of the fish, and the other value will be the speed of the fish. And we'll just say it's in centimeters per second. And we'll say that the length of the fish is in centimeters. Now some of these names of the fish you'll recognize, some of them you won't. One of the biggest fish uh, freshwater fish in North America is a pike. Those fish um, get really big. So let's say that this pike is 37.8 centimeters long. By the way, there's about 30, um, about 30 centimeters in a foot. So that, that fish isn't that big. Um, but then let's say it's swimming 148 centimeters per second. 
So that's about five feet per second. That's pretty fast. And then the next fish is kind of a different name, red Gurnard, G-U-R-N-A-R-D. Let's say it's 19.2 centimeters long and swims 47 centimeters per second. And I'm just going to keep going here with the other fish. Let's say a bass is 21.3 long and swims at 88. Instead of a red Gurnard, how about a regular Gurnard? Let's say it's 26.2 and 131. And let's say this is, the last one is a fish that's in the ocean, a haddock. 26.898. At least I think the haddock is in the ocean. So if I wanted to make a scatter plot of this, I've got some strange numbers. And I actually have some big numbers. Now, back in middle school, you should have learned what a broken line is. Do you remember what a broken line is? Doesn't that mean we skip some numbers? All right. So let's put the length of the fish down here on the x-axis. Let's make that the length for the x-axis and the speed on the y-axis. So if we're looking at the length of the fish, my longest fish is this one, and my shortest fish is this one. So I'm going from like 19 up to 38 or so. Now, we don't need to use ugly numbers. Let's use nice numbers. Wouldn't it make sense to maybe start at 15 and go up by fives, maybe? 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, something like that. And on the speed of the fish, my biggest speed is 148, my small, smallest speed is 47. So maybe start, let's use a broken line again, and maybe start at 40. What should we go up by on that? 20s, I think would be good. 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, and I suppose I could have a 160 up there. Now, if you're doing a scatter plot with these ugly numbers like this, your points don't have to be perfect because it is a scatter plot. We're just trying to see if there's a trend. We're trying to see if there's a correlation. So the pike is, has the longest length. So we're going to come way over here to about 37.8, which is about right there, and go up to 148, way up here someplace. Okay. Um, the red Grenard is really short. It's only 19.2, so it's maybe about there, and then up to 47, which is about there. The bass is 21 and 88, so there's 21, come up to 88. The regular Grenard is 26 and 131, it's a lot faster, way up here. And the haddock is 26.8, about the same length, but it's slower. It's only 98. So there's my scatter plot. Now, based on where those points showed up, would you say there's a correlation between the length of the fish and how fast it swims? Looks like there is to me. The longer it is, what can we say? The faster it swims. All right. And what we're going to learn how to do today is how to find the line, the actual equation of the line, 
that goes through those points. All right? We call this, and you need to put this in your notes, we call this the line of best fit. It's the line that really shows us what's going on with the data, with the numbers. All right? And we're going to find out how to calculate that line and get the actual equation. And then there, we're going to find out tomorrow there's some really cool things we can do once we know the line. We can make predictions. Like if I know the line, I could come over and say, okay, if a fish was 60 centimeters long, right, then it would swim this fast up here if I know the equation. All right? And I can actually find that number. So we're going to see that math really can relate to some real world stuff. So let's go to another example. This is going to be the main thing we learn, um, main new skill we learned today. Let's say for this example, number one, you're asked to make a scatter plot. I'm going to give you a table of values, and we're going to make a scatter plot. Then we're going to find the line of best fit. And when I say find the line, I mean the equation. And once we find the equation of that line, we're going to graph it using slope intercept. And we're going to see if it fits graph that line. All right. So let's say this is my table of values. I'm going to give you a table of XY values. One, two, three, four, five, six. They skip eight or skip seven and go to eight. And let's say the Y values are three, five, eight, nine, 11, 12, and 14. So they give you a table of values, and the first thing they ask you to do is make a scatter plot. Well, aren't these easier numbers to work with than our last one? I told you if we could do a hard one, we could do an easy one. So we only have to go up to eight on my x's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And on my Y's, I only need to go up to 14. Up to 14, and I'll just label every other one. All right. And we can plot our points in there, which I'm just going to keep going. You just follow along. My first point is the point 1, 3. 1, 3 is that point. 2, 5 is the next point. 3, 8. Next point. 4, 9. A little bit higher. 5, 11. 6, 12 and 8, 14. So if I get those points up there, it looks to me like there's definitely a positive correlation. All right? So what we're going to do now is find that line. The first thing we want to do is find the slope of the line. That's step one. Let's add that in your notes. Step one is to find the slope. Now, you remember the song, right? Slope is delta y over delta x, right? And delta means subtract. So don't I need two points to do that? Well, guess what? We've got like seven points to pick from. Which two points should I pick? 
Well, don't I want two points that kind of are going to take me straight through the center of those points? How about the first one? Would the last one work? I think so. Now, let me ask you a question. What if that last point was like down here someplace? It was like one of those outliers that doesn't match. Would I use that point? No, we would not want to use a point that's over there. So let's use the first point, this one, and the last point, that one, and find the change in y's over the change in x's to find my slope. So this point down here is 1, 3. This point up here is 8, 14. All I have to do is subtract the y's, which will be 14. 14 minus 3, right? Subtract the y values, then subtract the x values, 8 minus 1. So what's the slope? The slope of my line of best fit is 11 over 7, up 11 over 7. That's the first step, step 2. And you'll want to follow these steps when you're doing your assignment today. Step two has two pieces. First, find B. And anybody remember what B is? The y-intercept. All right. And the way we're going to do that is plug in the slope that we just found and one point from the table. We're going to plug in the slope we just found and one point from the table. So what am I going to plug it into? I'm going to plug it into y equals mx plus b. That's what I'm going to plug it into. So I know the slope. The slope is 11 sevenths. So I'm going to put that right here for m. I'm going to put the 11 sevenths where the m is. Now I need to multiply that by the x value of one of my points from the table. I've got like seven points to pick from. Wouldn't it make sense to use the easy one? The one and the three. Make sure it's one that's in the correlation. Don't use one that's over here out in the middle of nowhere. So I'll use one, three. So I'm going to put the one where the x is, put a one right there, and the three where the y is. And I'll still have plus b because we want to find out what b is. This is the trickiest part of the whole process is finding out what b is. Now, we just need to solve this, and by the way, a calculator is okay. 11 sevenths times 1 is 11 sevenths plus b. If I want to solve that simple algebra equation for b, wouldn't I subtract 11 sevenths from both sides? Even though it's ugly, that's what I do. So now I can use a calculator to find out what 3 minus 11 sevenths is. Make sure you put the 11 sevenths in parentheses. You do 11 divided by 7, all right? And what you get is 1.4. I'm just going to tell you that the calculator value is 1.4. Well, guess what? The hard part is over. I've got the slope. I've got the y-intercept. Step 3. is to write the equation. And that's easy once I've got the slope and the y-intercept. y equals mx plus b is my road map. y equals mx plus b is my road map. I know the slope. Here's the slope, 11 sevenths. So I'm going to have y equals 11 sevenths x plus what? 1.4, the 1.4 that we just found over here. So now 
we've got our equation of the line of best fit. Now, guess what? All we need to do is graph that line and see if it fits. If you go back to our original problem, we've made a scatter plot, we've found the line, now let's graph the line. So if I'm going to graph it, what's the y-intercept? Isn't it 1.4? So that's where we should start. I'm going to use a new color here, um, green. And right here is the y-intercept at 1.4. Just get it close. Right here is 1.4. 1.4. Now didn't we say my slope? Now we have to use the slope. What's the slope of my line of best fit? 11 sevenths. So I need to go up 11 over 7. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to right there. And then over 7. Well, here's 7. If I come over 7 to about right there, there's my point. And now we can connect the dots and let's see if we're fitting the data. Considering we did this without graph paper, I think we did pretty well. That is, and I Again, let's add it into our notes. That is what we call the line of best fit. It's the line that fits the data or models, we could say it models what's really going on with the data. And we're going to stop there for today.